Thank you very much for coming and joining me, Andy Gray, at One Gray Dot. I am a creative artist helping people to illustrate their stories through art. Uh, one of the processes I like to show is how you can draw using uh, just simple shapes. So we're going to start with this one. This is a series of eight videos. And these eight videos really demonstrate the process that I use for drawing. It's a little bit looser than you come across with most artists. Um, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. Uh, depending on which video you watch in this playlist, you might want to slow the video down to half speed so that you can follow along. Okay, it's not all that hard. So with this little kitten here, his cute cat as one might call it, uh, it, it basically it's starting with um, just a load of lines. So I'm looking at some reference material. Uh, which I found on YouTube. So basically I stopped a video on my other monitor so that I would be able to draw it. Now the process you're seeing here, I use in every single drawing, whether I am using uh, digital stuff, I'm using Rebel 3 software here, which is my favorite piece of software. Uh, Photoshop is kind of a very close second, but it doesn't have quite the natural media feel. Um, I only use digital because it's well simpler and faster um, for me to be able to produce stuff, but I do prefer the real world kind of materials. So this is what I do. I first of all create a very thin outline, a sketch, just so that I know where everything goes. And then having done that, I then drop into the ink and I drop the ink straight over. So it's black ink. So this is all real time, okay? Um, later videos, I'm going to speed up to twice as fast just because otherwise it'll go over the five minutes. But you can slow them down to half speed and by doing so, we'll be able to watch the real time view. Okay, so this cat is only going to take me five minutes to produce. And you can see how once I've put in the, uh, the outlines, the sketch outlines, they create for me a kind of a reference point. And you're just using very simple tubes and scribbles to make sure that you know where things are going to be able to go. And I'm constantly looking backwards and forwards. I'm constantly looking backwards and forwards at the reference material which is available to me. So just dropping in the pause here. Uh, always keeping it loose. I think one of the problems that a lot of people do is they, uh, when they're starting art, is they try to do things too tightly. So if you are a young person who's watching this and enjoying art and trying to do a bit more at school and all the rest of it, then then try and learn to draw loosely. When I was drawing, I was holding my pencil far too tightly. But you can see that you can just drop in the loose shapes. And by doing so, you can create an idea where things are. Doesn't need to be too tight, just nice and loose. So I'll come up to three minutes scribbling things in, just following those outlines and those reference ideas. Now I know that on this picture there is a blanket, so I'm just sketching the rough idea to where the blankets are. And there we go, we've now turned off the base layer, that means I'm about to drop in with the watercolours. So I like to try and get the eyes finished as soon as possible, no matter what picture I'm doing. Uh, because it kind of gives me uh, it gives a sense of the picture in itself and gives it a little bit of soul. The life is in the soul of the eyes. If you're drawing cute animals, then it's always a good idea to draw large eyes. The larger the eyes, the cuter the animal actually is. So here we go around on the bottom. Just firming up some of the lines. And you can see that I work from one side of the paper to the other. I'm never working in one place all the while, but just developing the whole picture as I go. And now on a separate layer, which is underneath the inking layer, I'm going to start dropping in the watercolour. Now this is when Rebel 3 really shines. Because with Photoshop, you just put it on as a stamp. But with Rebel 3, as soon as you take your brush off, it goes like watercolour and starts to flow. So it doesn't move at all while you're drawing, and even stops flowing while you're drawing. So you put your brush back down and it stops flowing, but you take your brush up, and watch how that watercolour actually flows into all the different places. And as I drop in another colour, you'll see how that flows in to the, um, into the colour that's already there. At some point I'll actually dry the watercolour layer, which means it'll stop flowing. For Bell 3 you have a very low loading of the watercolour and a very high 
high amount of water. That allows things to flow really well. If you want it to flow even better, then you soak the paper using the uh, using the water droplets on paper icon to the right there in the tool palette. So again, very simple. Don't try and make things too complicated. All the point of those shadows is, is just to create form. This is one of the other advantages of Rubel 3, that you can go in with a small pencil at the end and just put in some little doodles to uh, make it look nice. <laughs> 